Hello. Uh, my name is Damon Little, and I'm the head chef at the Headland Center for the Arts up in the Marine Headlands. Um, this is going to be the first of probably a few videos on cooking skills um, and also just things that I've been working on around the house while we're in quarantine. The first thing that we're going to do, this video is going to cover, is making kefir. So if you're not familiar with kefir, it is a um, cultured dairy product, uh, somewhat similar to yogurt but not as thick. Um, and it is made by essentially a very simple process of taking these kefir grains, which are similar to, say, a scoby that gets used in kombucha, but they kind of take, take a different form. They call them grains, but it's really kind of like a mass uh, that looks like little cauliflowers. <laughs> So getting into making kefir, um, what you'll need are kefir grains, which you can uh, you can buy them online. There are a few stores in the Bay Area where you can get them. Ideally, get them from a friend like me, who has extra because they continue to grow. So much like making kombucha, your scoby uh, produces more of itself. What you need are kefir grains, uh, milk. Um, a jar or something similar. Um, also, a spoon is useful. Um, but the main thing is a strainer. Now, you'll read a lot about how you shouldn't use uh, metal to be in contact with kefir grains. Um, I have a plastic strainer, it totally works, but I've also done it with a metal strainer, and that totally works. And I don't know that I have noticed any kind of difference in the two, so I wouldn't worry too much about the strainer, just as long as it actually physically can strain out the deeper grains, like not too big holes or not too small holes. And then a bowl or something to uh, catch the keeper underneath it. I like this big Pyrex thing because, you know, it fits my strainer, and then I can pour that out. That's fine, but you basically about uh, with a ratio of like one to three, one to four, you have grains and milk. Put them together in a jar or other container that you can um, seal off from bugs and dust, but let gas escape. Like I just put a lid on it, but leave it a little loose. Um, and you let it sit at room temperature for 24 hours and then it becomes kefir. And so the only work involved is straining out the grains, drinking the kefir, and adding uh, more milk. Um, and it is a, it's a daily process. So you can slow it down if you want, uh, if you need to step away from the very meaty kefir um, by putting it in the refrigerator, but then you want to still give it some fresh milk like once a week if uh, otherwise it can rot if it if it goes unintended for a long enough time i think it's really delicious i drink it straight um i sometimes make smoothies with it you can also use it to um culture uh cream which will yield something like a creme fraiche or a sour cream um, and then if you take that cream and you churn it you can make a cultured butter um, which is one of my favorite things ever So one of the other things that I do with kefir is I use it as part of my oatmeal making in the morning. So the day before, I'll put a tablespoon of kefir in a pint-sized jar with some steel-cut oats, some 
flax seeds and some pumpkin seeds and then fill the rest of the jar with water. Let it ferment overnight or up to 24 hours. Then put it in a saucepan and cook it until it's thick. Thank you for uh, sitting through this first video of mine. Um, I'm still getting used to the process. And um, hopefully you'll come back and uh, see another one of my videos. So, signing off for now, Damon.